Machine vision and embedded systems is an exciting trend that offers tremendous opportunity, amazing new possibilities for our products, but a level of complexity that can sometimes seem daunting to accomplish. Can this advanced technology be implemented with reasonable cost, low power consumption, and with less complex silicon? Join me, Todd Baker, as I explore Future Electronics' newly released Northern Lights platform that enables engineers to expand where machine vision can be utilized. Hi, I'm Todd Baker, Corporate Vice President of Engineering at Future Electronics. Artificial intelligence and machine learning are an area of embedded design that we're seeing become more and more prevalent across a lot of markets, a lot of applications out there. It just seems like a lot of our systems have got to become more intelligent. They've got to be able to collect data from the environment around them and make decisions on their own without any user interface, which really adds a lot of complexity to what we're doing as designers. Uh, we're pretty used to, you know, collecting data from sensors, bringing that into our microcontroller, uh, collecting it, maybe sending it up to the cloud and analyzing that with, with human eyes at some other point. Um, but what about systems that have to make real-time decisions? And, and more complex, what about systems that have to make real-time decisions based on what they're seeing through the lens of a camera sensor? How do we make machine vision applications uh, a little bit more robust? How do we make them so that they're not too terribly complex, uh, so that we can reduce the cost as much as possible, and also so how we can also keep the power consumption levels of those applications as low as possible so that we can put machine vision into an even wider array of applications in the market? Today, I have the privilege of speaking to our very own Bill Pratt, who's our regional director in our Future Intelligence Solutions Group, and Bill's also an expert in machine vision systems. Bill, thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having me, Todd. Absolutely. And so talk to me, you know, like I said earlier, we're seeing a lot of applications uh, as we talk to a lot of engineers out there and, and a lot of new applications. What are some of the cool applications that you've seen lately for machine vision systems? Oh, that's a great question. We see machine vision applications in factory automation, retail, traffic and transportation, security and surveillance, sports and motion, agriculture, as well as, you know, medical life science markets. You know, and to take a little bit, you know, deeper look at each one of those verticals, factory automation, you know, we're seeing growth in the automotive, robotics, electronics and semiconductor manufacturing, food and beverage, pharma and healthcare. You know, image processing systems are used in all aspects of quality control and process control. These control and inspection systems offer support in automating production, ultimately, you know, promoting greater efficiency. Other areas that we see significant growth is the retail market. We see machine vision being utilized with ATMs, automated checkout systems, vending machines and kiosks, traffic manage recognition, people counting, shelf inspection, you know, there has been significant development and growth within the retail segment. AI and ML advances have allowed for increased automation and accuracy using vision systems. Another area is traffic and transportation. We've all seen where tolling and license plate reading has been around for many years. Yeah. But now we're seeing significant advancements with law enforcement, uh, monitoring traffic, you know, traffic management, also within the rail system. So license plate reading has played a major role, correct? You know, but enforcement now now is an ever so increasing area, as well as vision systems being deployed to monitor and manage traffic patterns to alleviate congestion. Also, advancements in in cab safety for rail and transportation vehicles. You know, making sure that they're monitoring rail signals, brakes, and driver awareness. Also, another big area is sports and entertainment. You know, since the pandemic, where distancing was necessary. We've seen a significant increase in MLAI in this particular area. Just imagine, you yeah. know, no trainer, referee, or spectator can see with the speed and detail precision of a high quality digital camera. This makes digital cameras indispensable in the field of sports and motion analysis. And another great area is agriculture. You would never think the farmer would have the highest technology out there. But a good example is crop cultivation. Smart vision is used to identify weeds, so herbicides are used conservatively. Nurseries and greenhouses automatically monitor and analyze plant growth. Another great example is livestock breeding. Camera-based systems are used to monitor and analyze and automate the processing. 
So this will ultimately help reduce costs and increase efficiencies. You know, great examples are milking carousels. They're all robotic yeah. and they all utilize machine vision. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy the amount of places that electronics are going these days. It's exciting. I mean, uh, you know, as an engineer, I think, you know, all these places, we now have electronics milking our cows. Uh, you know, you mentioned on the sports thing, I, I can think of a number of uh, football plays for a few of my teams. I would have liked to have uh, an electronic <laughs> doing the review as opposed to the ref. Um, I, th I think we've all been there probably, uh, no matter what sport we follow. Um, you know, so I, I know, you know, when I used to do a lot of these designs with customers, because I had worked with customers who did like license plate reading. And, and things along those lines years ago. Um, and it was all being done by very high-end, very expensive uh, FPGAs at that time. And they ended up being great systems, very, very successful. Um, but, you know, the cost in some cases and the complexity in some cases was quite prohibitive. Um, I know you and the team uh, at, at, in FIS have been working on a mid-range FPGA design to be able to do object recognition and machine vision systems. Can you give me a little demonstration about that and talk to it? Oh, absolutely. So this particular FPGA has three main components. First is the imaging pipeline. So this design converts the RGB565 parallel interface from the CMOS imager mm -hmm. to an RGB888 8-bit space. We then use the RGB888 uh, to convert that to YUV. The reason why we have to have YUV is we use the Y luminance component as the data set used for training is actually in grayscale. The pipeline then scales the image to match the training data set of 28 by 28 pixels. The next okay. phase is the convolutional neural network, which is made up of four hidden layers of a three by three kernel with a stride of one, a max pooling layer, and then a fully connected layer. And the final portion of this design uses a soft RISC-V processor to dynamically load the weights and biases for the CNN engine. This allows us to have significant flexibility where we can actually retrain this network for other data sets. Also, the RISC-V is the image frame grabber and inference display control, which allows us to scale and display the camera image on the OLED display. As well, it also supports the communication to control the robotic arm. So this design showcases you know, a multitude of features, but also highlights the flexibility and performance of FPGAs. Yeah, and so you guys are using the, the, the microchip polar fire in that, and obviously a, a great FPGA device for that. You know, for, you know, sometimes FPGAs versus processors versus microcontrollers, it can almost be a religious thing in the, in the engineering space when we're talking about embedded systems engineers. We kind of know what we know and we stick with what we know. What do you see as the benefits of using an FPGA in an application like this as opposed to using something like a microprocessor or a multi-course and, and, you know, maybe a full-blown Linux operating system? You know, for applications that require accelerated computational performance with accurate and predictable outcomes, as well as these applications have a strict power and footprint budgets, yeah. FPGAs excel with these specific needs. Intrinsically parallel and well-suited for specialized ta tasks that demand extensive parallelism, obviously, during the processing yeah. element, hardware programmable FPGAs accelerate the CNN. Um, which are used for the object detection and identification, as well as other machine vision applications. So flexibility is the major benefit of an FPGA in vision-based you know, machine learning devices. FPGAs integrate a multitude of resources into one chipset, such as hard and soft IP cores for camera sensor interfaces, control logic, compression algorithms, display and network interfaces, and an architectural favorable for neural networks, the parallelism. FPGAs provide the flexibility of being programmed either in part or whole in the field. For example, if a developer wanted to update and deploy an application system with the latest version of HDMI, MIPI CSI, or even USB, it would be easier to do so in an FPGA than with a custom-built ASIC or microprocessor or microcontroller. You know, you, it enables one to build future-proof, scalable designs, allowing support to evolving standards and reconfigure hardware for revised specifications. Yeah, I, and I think that's that's one of the key things that the flexibility that that brings, the ability to expand on your applications with an FPGA. 
um, is, is truly a game changer, I think, for a lot of, of engineers out there that are doing this kind of thing. You know, as you're, you know, as an embedded engineer who's looking at this kind of system and, and your boss has just come in your door and has said, hey, I, I need you to add embedded system, uh, you know, imaging to your next uh, system. I, I want to be able to have your system detect certain writing or certain behaviors or, or be able to detect a cat or a dog. Or you mentioned agricultural applications earlier, um, you know, where I want to be able to detect as I'm, I've got my, uh, you know, my, my, uh, fertilizer versus weed killer, uh, you know, running across the, 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 the farm. And I want to be able to detect, should I fire at this plant weed killer or should I fire at this plant fertilizer? I want to have that intelligence built into the system. So, you know, as an engineer, you, you get a little bit of a, maybe a pit in your stomach at that point. Like, oh, I'm not sure if I know how to do that. That's going to be kind of a brand new thing for me. Um, you know, what are some of the challenges engineers face when they have those situations any gotchas that you typically see or, or any advice you would give to an engineer who is trying to start up with this kind of design for the first time? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, designing with an FPGA can be phasing and poses challenges, especially for engineers that do not have prior FPGA experience. Yeah. You know, there are several tools that are utilized to implement the FPGA. You have the RTL design, the synthesis, simulation, netless generation, place and route, and then finally timing closure. So adding ML to your vision platform adds additional complexity as there are many ML platforms and resources to build a framework for neural networks. You know, Future Electronics has a group of specialized engineers that provide the resources to assist engineering teams through this process. You know, gotchas that are common? Another great question. You know, there are gotchas. You know, and the simplest part of it is making sure that you write good synchronous RTL code. Yeah, I, I don't think that, you know, if you don't have that, you're going to have a lot of other things broken, no doubt about it. That's really going to be the key thing for for all of it. Um, and then, so how can Futures Team, uh, FIS has become a great, very strong organization for us, uh, I think, as a company. And, and having that group of processor experts, FPGA experts, um, you know, ready to help engineers out there has been a huge benefit. What are some of the ways that your team works with uh, some of your customer engineers? And what can you offer to those who are starting these kinds of system designs? You know, Future Intelligence Solutions it's a group of engineers. We are all design engineers that augment our local FAE, FAE support team. FIS has FPGA specialist engineers on staff that can assist our customer engineers in all aspects of machine vision, you know, FPGA based designs. But FAS also has software engineers on staff as well to assist either with the software as five processor, for instance, that's being utilized in our design, or if the system requires an external application processor along with the FPGA, our software engineers can assist with the platform bring up. FIS can also assist with the machine learning development, sharing with our end customers the flow we utilize in the development of the Northern Lights platform. So all in all, we're a team that can accelerate your time to market, bringing a group of experts to augment your team. Yeah, and, and I love that. I, I love the fact that we're there. We've got the ability to be there for our, our engineers out there, uh, sit down at a workbench, work with those other engineers and help them be successful in the designs faster, get to market faster, be successful faster. Um, and, and I think that's a real expertise that we bring. I think the Northern Light platform that you guys have developed and the ability to have that machine vision um, and, and then beyond that, uh, motor control of a robotic arm with microchip products, uh, with including the, the, the Polar Fire uh, family of FPGAs has been a really, really impressive demonstration. I know that's something that we can take that, uh, we can show that to other engineers, you, let them use that as a base platform for what they're actually trying to do um, so that they're not starting at square zero. They're actually starting with a little bit of a leg up. So um, I think that's a really powerful thing and really appreciate you showing that to us today, Bill. If Absolutely. You have, Thank if, you. If you have any needs at all, um, as far as machine vision, any projects that you're working on where you do have questions, we'd absolutely love to help you in any way that we can. If you have questions on the video, questions on our capabilities, or questions just on how we can help, please reach out to us at shaping the future at futureelectronics.com. Again, that's shaping the future at futureelectronics.com. And we want to be be there to uh, help you with some of our local engineering teams um, and make sure that we bring the right experts, the right support suppliers and the right solutions to you. Thank you very much for your time uh, and we hope you'll have a great day.